Are you wondering just how much snow New York City is going to get during this upcoming winter season of 2020 and 2021? Hi, everybody. I'm meteorologist Joe Rayo, and we have prepared for all of you a special snow survey for Central Park, which will give you, I think, some idea or give you some hints as to what we may see in terms of snowfall for this upcoming winter. It's a PowerPoint presentation that I put together. And so why don't we begin that presentation? I'll go about first by uh, sharing my screen here with all of you, which I'm going to do right now. And we'll start the presentation right from the very beginning. And uh, let me first uh, talk about what we can anticipate for the upcoming winter. As we head into another winter season, many of you are probably wondering just how much snow we're going to have. Now, all sorts of predictions have already been made by everybody from well, well-known private forecasting agencies and services to NOAA. And of course, need I leave out the Farmer's Almanac. Everybody making projections as to what this winter is gonna be like in terms of cold and in terms of especially snow. Now, interestingly, we have found that for the five boroughs of New York City, a reasonably good answer to this question can be ascertained by the end of December, if not sooner. You see, the month of December seems to be a good barometer to tell us about just what kind of winter season it will be regarding snowfall here in the Big Apple. Will it be above or will it be below normal? Now, we've looked at the long-term averages at Central Park, which span a total of 30 years. The most recent data set covers the years from 1980 to 2010. Now, a new data set will become available for 1990 to 2020, as soon as this year of 2020 comes to an end. I know a lot of you are counting down, waiting for that to happen, waiting for 2020 to finally end. Anyway, during the average winter at Central Park, a total of 25.7 inches of snow accumulates. Now the average date for the first inch of snow comes usually right around the fifth day of December. And in December, typically, an average of 4.8 inches of snow accumulates. Now, interestingly, based upon the last 30 years, like a line drawn in the sand, or in this case, the snow, there is a specific number that delineates the boundary between an above normal snow year from a below normal snow year. And that number is three. Remember that number, the number three. And why? Well, here we go. Any December in which snowfall reaches or exceeds three inches at Central Park believe it or not, signals a 93% probability that's better than a 9 out of 10 chance of heavier snow falling for the upcoming winter season. Out of the last 30 winters, 14 have seen snowfalls in excess of 25.7 inches. And out of those 14, 13 out of those 14 cases, December snowfall totaled at least 3 inches or more. So you get the picture? You get three or more inches of snow in December at Central Park, the odds are rather high, better than nine out of 10, that it will turn out to be a snowier than normal winter. You don't like that if you don't like snow, right? Well, look at this uh, interesting statistic. Any December in which snowfall totals 2.9 inches or less at Central Park indicates an 81% probability, that's better than four out of five, of a lighter than normal winter for snowfall. Out of the last 30 winters, 16 have seen snowfalls of less than 25.7 inches or less than the normal complement of snow. Out of those 16, 13 of those 16, December snowfall totaled 2.9 inches or less. Interesting, huh? Now, I wanna stress this. Those of you who are watching, let's say on Long Island, or up in the Hudson Valley or across Northern and Central New Jersey, you're probably saying to yourself, well, I'll just use the December rule here. I have to stress that this interesting statistical quirk only seems to work for the immediate New York City area. What you're seeing on your screen now is an example of how this can't work for other areas aside from New York. For places that are well outside the city limits, it doesn't work so well. In some years, for example, as you see here, Central Park may have had an above normal snow year, but places especially north and west of New York City saw less snowfall because offshore storms were primarily snow producers 
and delivered heavy snow near and along the coastal plain, but lighter amounts as you head inland. So if you live, let's say, up in uh, Orange and Putnam and Dutchess and Ulster County, for example, and you uh, determine that at the end of December, hey, it looks like New York City may see less snowfall uh, for this upcoming winter than normal. That may not apply to uh, the uh, areas north and west, because again, there may be a lot of snowstorms offshore and lighter amounts inland and heavier amounts uh, uh, along the coast or in the city. There also is another case where it might have been just warm enough for most storms to fall mostly as rain in New York City and coastal areas, but just cold enough inland to allow for snow to fall instead. So you see, this is a tricky thing here. It, again, it's it really just involves the immediate New York City metropolitan area because it could be so much different as you go either to the east or north or west or south of New York City. Here are some interesting quirks though, interesting anomalies for uh, this uh, statistical rule. This past winter, last winter, as we all know, pretty much didn't see much snow at all. In fact, it ranked fourth on the list at Central Park among the least snowiest winters with only 4.8 inches. Last December was a clue. Only 2.5 inches of snow fell, not much thereafter. So again, 2.9 inches or less, usually a below normal year for snowfall. And indeed, that was the case last year. Over the last 30 winters, there has been cases where we've had no snow in December or just a trace of snow in December. And that has happened a total of nine times. In eight out of those nine times, winter snowfall ended up below normal, 89% of the time. However, there was that one case out of the nine, December of 2015, where just a trace of snow fell. You'd figure, okay, well, we got a trace of snow in December 2015, we're not gonna see all that much snow for this upcoming winter season. But that was the one winter where an above normal snow amount fell, uh, a total of 32.8 inches of snow. Now that's something to note because in January of 2016, January 22nd and 23rd to be exact, we had a snowstorm. Oh boy, did we have a snowstorm. Look at the list, it tops the list. It turned out to be the heaviest single snowstorm in the 169 year history of Central Park. Still stands as a record, 27.5 inches of snow. And that one storm pretty much made up the whole winter snowfall for 2015-2016. Take a look at this, 2015-2016, 32.8 inches of snow. Again, we had that one big storm, 27.5 inches on January 22nd and 23rd. Well, if we took away that one big storm, that one single storm, the winter of 2015, 2016 would have ended up only with 5.3 inches of snow. Again, one storm can make the difference some years. And that year, that one storm on January 22nd, 23rd, 2016 sure made the difference. Now, if you're not enamored with flakes, if you don't like snow, let me point out December, 1990. In that year, in that December, 7.2 inches of snow accumulated at Central Park. Well, according to our rule, 7.2 inches, oh my goodness. Well, we'll certainly have snow, above normal snow, maybe a lot of snow for the winter. And indeed, in any other year in our survey, that would point to a snowier than normal winter season. And yet, the winter of 1991 saw a total at Central Park of 24.9 inches or eight tenths of an inch below normal. So let's say you don't like snow. Let's say that this December, we have a month where we see more than 2.9 inches. Does that mean we're going to get a lot of snow more than the normal amount? Not necessarily. There's still a probability, albeit very small, 7%, that New York could still see less than its normal winter complement of snow. However, let me point this out. When we get more than 7.7 .7 inches in the month of December, and we've had nine such cases over the last 30 years, where we've had Decembers with more than 7.7 .7 inches or 7.7 .7 inches or more snow, well, that's a lot. That is, at, the, at least statistically, that means we have a 100% probability of above normal snowfall for the upcoming winter season. In fact, in all nine of those cases, 
at Central Park, at least 40 inches of snow was the result. And in fact, out of those nine cases, three of those nine ended up being among the top 10 snowiest winters ever recorded at Central Park. 1995, 1996, 75.6 inches. Remember the blizzard of 96? That storm alone helped contribute in a major way to making that the heaviest, snowiest year on record in New York City. That was number one, top of the list, top of the heap. 2010, 2011, you remember that year? The Snowmageddon year, 61.9 inches. That ranks number three on the list of snowy winters in Central Park. And finally, 2013, 2014, 57.4 inches, number seven on the top 10 list of snowy winters. Again, these three winters came in years where, or in winters where December saw more than 7.7 inches of snow. So we get more than 7.7 inches of snow. Not only is there a chance that we'll see uh, a higher amount, in fact, it's, it's likely that would be a higher than normal winter season for snow, but there's a chance that that winter could go whole hog and be among the top uh, snow producing uh, winters of all time. So again, will New York City see a lot of snow or a little snow in 2020, 2021? Place your bets on the month of December. And remember that the magic number is three. I hope that uh, you found this interesting. I want to thank all of you for watching this uh, presentation. And I'd also like to ask, unless you've already done it already, to please subscribe to my weather channel. It's the Joe Rayo Weather Channel, which can be found right here on YouTube. I'm going to uh, uh, go back now uh, to uh, stop sharing my screen here, which I'm going to do right now. There we go. We're back. Uh, and again, I want to thank you very much for watching. I hope you found this to be uh, an interesting presentation. And again, if you haven't already done so, please subscribe. We're, our next presentation will be a special one in an astronomical sense. We're going to be talking about the uh, big night of the shooting stars, December 13th, uh, Sunday night. We have the Geminid meteor shower, the best meteor shower of the year. And we'll be putting on a special YouTube presentation about that. Uh, so I hope that you'll join us then. Until then, thank you very, very much. This is meteorologist Joe Rayo. Have a very, very good day. And you might want to have those snow shovels ready just in case.